In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so evening and the morning were the second day. It is important to first have a solid and firm foundation on what is the truth, because without it, you will be easily deceived. According to Marvel, in the beginning there was only one universe, the first firmament. Loneliness led it into making life, resulting in the birth of several celestial beings. The Dark Ones, who the first firmament named aspirants, were industrious in their worship to the first firmament, seeking its approval whenever they created life on their own. But there were also the multicolored ones, also called the multicolored rebels, who were as many as the stars themselves. They wanted their own creations to evolve for the universe to grow, change, and die, which was seen by the first movement as madness and a sacrilege. The multicolored ones were branded heretics and in turn renamed themselves the Celestials, desperately believing that the views of the first movement were short-sighted. The idea that the first movement was the one true God and every creation, including the creations made by all aspirants, are to worship and be obedient to the will of the first movement. They began to oppose the other aspirants and the first movement, which eventually led to what is described as a cosmic holy war. More widely and officially known as the Celestial War, according to the comic books. As the war approached an end, the aspirants created the God Killer armor to turn the tide of the battle and annihilate the Celestials. The God Killer was later stripped of some of its components to provide key elements for the aspirants' fleets, which entered a civil war. The internal conflict gave the Celestials enough time to recover and eventually crush the Aspirants. The Aspirants, the obedient and industrious worshippers, were only defeated because of a civil war. They were winning the battle, but due to internal conflict, it gave the Celestials enough time to recover and eventually crush them. When the Celestials detonated their unimaginable weapons in the last conflagration, the first movement was shattered into pieces forcing them to flee in terror to the furthest edges of being, with the remaining aspirants. Hundreds of new universes were born from the first firmament's pure substance, forming a new collective being who was the second cosmos and the first multiverse. As time passed, the multiverse died time and time again, only to be reborn soon afterwards. Each time the multiverse was reborn, it brought new advancements to the universe. The fourth cosmos is said to be a true believer that journeyed into mystery. No image was ever created for him, nothing else is described. 
but it's intriguing to think that the living embodiment of the universe journeyed into mystery. What else or what unknown information is there that the universe had to journey into mystery while seeking it? The fifth cosmos was the maker of magic. The sixth cosmos was the inventor of science. And the seven and eight cosmos are brother-sister pair of the same being. Yes, that's how Marvel describes it. Infinity was the embodiment of the seven cosmos and the sixth multiverse alongside eternity, with whom she was one. Eternity was all that existed along the fabric of time across the entirety of the multiverse, having been formed to ensure the boundlessness of creation. As a result, eternity came to embody the multiverse across all its planes and levels. The Infinity Stones seen throughout the Marvel movies have deep-rooted ties to the entire rebirth cycle, which was lightly touched on in the collector scene from Guardians of the Galaxy. Before creation itself, there were six singularities. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity Stones. These stones, it seems, can only be brandished by beings of extraordinary strength. Observe. These carriers can use the stone to mow down entire civilizations like wheat in a field. So you may be wondering, why is this important to know? Well, we all have a brother, sister, uncle, friend or maybe yourself that is a Marvel enthusiast. Someone who has watched all Marvel films, can recite every line by heart, and knows the name of every character, even the minor ones. A precise easter egg hunter who would stay back in the cinema for 8 minutes to watch the end credit scene that is only under 60 seconds long. Yeah, we all have one of those people in our lives. I am one of those people. Over the years, especially as of recently, there has been a push that religion, with major emphasis only on Christianity, has no place in comics, video games, or entertainment. It is commonly argued that entertainment should be an escape from that aspect of the world. A lot of people will say there is no relation to God in the Marvel Universe, or it's all science fiction. Over the years, Marvel has done a pretty good job covering this aspect of the universe, but it was all hidden in plain sight. They pushed that the Big Bang was their prescribed creationism theory of where the universe started, but the actual question is what do they believe started the Big Bang? I want you to ask the most devout Marvel fan you know a simple question. What is the first firmament? I can guarantee many of you will be asked the what? They may think they knew everything there was to know about the Marvel Universe, but in actuality, they only knew the narrative Marvel wants them to know. So, are you still wondering why this is important to know? Well, if you still are, as Christians, we tend to take things at face value and omit the fact that there is more than what we see on the surface. Many of us even compromise and just go with the flow, even though our something is wrong here bells have been ringing on full blast, aka your God-given discernment. Some of us even use the mentioned Marvel media as an escape from the pains and pressures of life, and by extension the call of God on our life. I can just have been a person who found it easier to binge watch Marvel shows, watch over the same movies repeatedly, play their video games for countless hours, and research information about their heroes was much easier than praying and reading my Bible. Yeah, I have been there, and you are probably in that same place too, knowing that you should not be so consumed with this media, but you cannot help it. Another major reason why this is important to know, especially now, is because the new slate of movies and shows being produced by Marvel are dangerous for those built with a shaky foundation to consume. I mean, look at Eternals for example. We have watched unguided. We have helped them progress and seen them. Wonders. They are not even hiding it anymore. They are just coming straight out now. I mean, the poster literally says in the beginning on it. Even I, someone who has a generous amount of comic knowledge on these things, was not expecting them to put in the beginning on the poster. 
And this is literally only the beginning of what they have planned. I mean, have you seen Loki or WandaVision? The TVA, he who remains, the Dark Hole. All these things are literally just the beginning of what they have planned. It is important to know the foundation of what these things are rooted in. 1 John 4 in the ESV says, They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let us put some emphasis on verse 6. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. These authors, Stanley, Jack Kirby, Grant Morrison, Steve Ditko, knew exactly where the inspiration for the first human the Celestials, and the Aspirants came from. Do you? If you have not realized, then the first moment is nothing more than Genesis 1 from verse 6 to 8 in the King James Version, which says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. What about the cosmic holy war? Did you catch which scripture it is literally flipping on its head? Well, it's none other than Revelation 12 from verse 7 to 9, which says, Now war rose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And a great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to earth and his angels were thrown down with him. In the original holy war, as seen in revelations that is yet to come, Satan the opposer will be defeated and casted out of heaven along with the angels that fought back against God with him. The way it is according to the word of God. However, in Marvel's cosmic holy war, this has flipped completely on its head. The opposers, which were the multicolored ones, also known as the celestials, won the battle and defeated the first firmament their creator and his obedient followers, the aspirants. It is important to note that according to Marvel, the Celestials were only able to win because of a civil war that broke out amongst the aspirants. The Celestials, who were weakened and about to be defeated, won the war because of internal conflict. After the Celestials won the war, all the remaining aspirants and the first firmament were banished to the far shore and next place, which is Marvel's version of an infinite space of nothing Described by Deadpool once as it's big, the big nothing, a nothing forever, a place God's hands have never touched, outside of space, outside of the universe, outside of eternity. The mind-jogging thing here is what is meant by a place God's hands never touched. But we shall leave that for another time. The universal foundation of one of the biggest movie franchises is nothing more than a flipping of two key passages from the Bible. But many people will go to the grave arguing that Marvel has nothing to do with the Bible. The argument can even be made that all of this with the first firmament, the aspirant, celestials, etc. can be taken from another mythology or religion. Only because they are simply comfortable living and believing in a narrative which foundation is formed and created on error. So I ask you, is your foundation formed on a verse flipped on its head or is it formed on the word and truth of God?